By now, most of us get we're supposed to scrub our teeth a couple times a day, and for sure we gotta floss, but there's so much more to knowing about your mouth in terms of your overall health. I'm Lori Corbin, welcome to the Bellamy Studio. Today we're talking with Teeth Talk Girl. Yes, it's a woman who will tell you the ins and outs of what to eat, what not to eat, gums, flossing, foods kids should eat, surprising foods you might not want to eat, and how you should actually finish a meal. There is so much to know about your mouth, and we're going to get to it today. Today, we are talking teeth. I'm with Whitney DeFogio. She is a dental hygienist, a registered. I'm so glad you registered. Otherwise, you know, are there are there felons that like, are there people that do this and don't get a degree? Technically, if you get your degree and you don't pass boards, you're only a dental hygienist, you're not registered. Oh, so you guys should ask, because maybe you don't have a real one. Anyway, so yes, we're talking teeth, we're talking about brushing. So many things about teeth, guys, that you're gonna be fascinated about. I was stunned, I had a pre-conversation with Whitney the other day, and there's just so many neat things. You don't know, I don't think they know, Whitney. Okay, and so one of the things, it's summertime, it's summertime teeth. Do you know your teeth are different in the summer, right? Mm -hmm. Why is that? Yeah, different seasons can cause different it, dental issues. So the big thing in the summer is dehydration. Lots of us don't drink enough water, and when we're not drinking enough water, there's less saliva in our mouth, and when there's less saliva, we get dry mouth. And dry mouth, what a lot of people don't know is dry mouth actually increases your risk of cavities and tooth sensitivity. Wow. Yes. Another situation is all of the over whitening we're doing. We're all whitening our teeth in the summer because there's so many um, fun things going on in the summer. We have weddings, yeah. we have summer activities. We want white teeth. I get it. But a lot of people don't know when you whiten your teeth, even if you don't have sensitive teeth to begin with, teeth whitening will just make them more sensitive. Is that because they're porous? Like they kind of have holes in them, so, so to speak? They do. They yeah. have tubules, which mm -hmm. we kind of call them like the pores. And yeah, especially when they're open, if you have gum recession or anything like that, they are open. We call them like naked teeth. They're like, ooh, they get really cold from whitening strips or any kind of cold summer drinks, things like that. We are drinking lemonade, ice cream, all that stuff that could trigger sensitivity as well. Right, and I also know this because I have whitened my teeth before, a um, couple things. Then you can't have coffee pretty much, right, or anything. But I do remember um, there was something, um, there was some sort of thing that you put on and it was almost like a teeth coating. Paradox? Paradox sign? Oh, yeah. Something? So, well, there's yeah. Di yeah, yeah. different type of Kinda toothpaste. Yes, yeah. there's different toothpaste where your, your dentist, if you're getting your trays from the office, they will sometimes give you the whitening trays and then they'll also give you sensitivity trays with yeah. the special gel to put on your teeth. What I do if I'm doing at home, like over the counter stuff, I'll use the strips whatever I'm using, and then I'll use sensitivity toothpaste that whole week. Nice. It's the same idea as putting the gel on your teeth, yeah. And she has really nice teeth, you guys. So we talked about, you're right, we're using acids, we're drinking lemonade and, and things like that. And then I'm sure you kind of mentioned dry. I think a lot of people kind of party down. I don't want to, I want to mention anybody's name or anything, but I might have seen people drinking, you know, a lot during the summer because it's hot and dry and then there's parties. Yeah. Is that kind of a thing too? Yes. Alcohol mm. definitely dries out your mouth. We even say, um, don't use mouthwash with alcohol in it because it has a higher chance of giving you dry mouth as well. Mm -hmm. And that leads to another segue because I didn't talk about this with Whitney, but I remember during the pandemic, you go back to a doctor and the first thing they do is go, uh, you need to gargle. Okay. What I do know about my fabulous micro gut biome is if I gargle, it does kind of take away some good bugs, right? Yeah. So yeah. interesting, same thing in the mouth. So you never want to over swish with peroxide or antiseptics, any kind of um, thing that is made to kill the microbes, you're yeah. killing the good bacteria and the bad bacteria. So yeah. you never want to do that too much. But before a dental cleaning is a good time because then it lowers all the microbes in your mouth, less chance of spreading any kind of diseases in the air when we're cleaning your teeth. So we, we have some stuff on our table today, guys. And the reason why is because there are things that surprise me. We have a we have a plate of food that I would say probably we'd all be saying that's not really a shocker. Um, however, and you can kind of hold that towards you because these are foods that you would say hurt. Okay, probably not brilliant for the um, digestion anyway, but we're talking about high carbohydrate foods, the white 
these are basically sugar to not only your teeth, but your body. Yes. Yeah. So that's the thing with these fermentable carbohydrates in a sense, right? Um, a lot of the, they break down into sugars, right? It's still sugar. We all know sugar is bad for your teeth, right? We know that gives you cavities. So these are surprising. A lot of people don't realize that like bread, crackers, goldfish, we all like to give little kids goldfish. I eat goldfish too, but, and all these fun things that we snack on are actually worse for your teeth than say dark chocolate. There's some, I would say these are worse for your teeth than candy, most candies. So that makes my heart sing, <laughs> dark chocolate, yay. But when we did have a conversation, also you were yeah. saying, um, we all have that health halo sometimes, like I would not eat any of these things, but I would eat oatmeal mm -hmm. and I would eat sourdough bread. And you said, yeah. yeah, still, I mean, your mouth is not always the same as your tummy, right? right? Definitely. Yeah. So like even these healthier, good foods like oatmeal, think about it, they still get really stuck in your teeth. If you're you you know, if you're not rinsing them away, like we have a lot of grooves, everyone's teeth are different, but if you have a lot of grooves and in between your teeth, that stuff could get stuck in your teeth more than, we'll use dark chocolate as the example again. Dark chocolate just rinses off really nicely. It's not, it's not getting in there like the oatmeal or the breads. And so there go on the other side, we have some foods that you would say, well, these look delicious anyway and are, are nice choices, but these are healing foods in a sense for the teeth, right? Yeah, so I always yeah. think it's the order in which you eat, right? So you can have kind of, you know, everything in moderation with the bad foods if we're talking dental health, but if you eat, say, cheese and crackers, if you eat the cheese second, Eat the crackers first, those are bad. Eat the cheese second, those are good. The cheese actually neutralizes the acid in your mouth. So we don't like acids. Acids give acid make an acidic mouth, you are more prone to getting cavities. But when you have a neutral mouth, that's healthy. You don't get cavities. So the cheese actually helps. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you would also say then protein food. Is that yeah, accurate? Yeah, protein's good. You yeah. can't go wrong. I mean, huh. a lot of times, right, I always think like if we're eating protein food, it's never just by itself, it's usually, I mean, some right. people do, but some right. people eat it in a sandwich, like you're eating a ham sandwich or you're eating, I don't know, different. Right. But, um, so yeah, if you can break, if you want to really be the best dental health eater there is, I always say it's the order in which you eat. Right. Eat the protein last, yeah, if you're having a sandwich. Or you could kind of be French and maybe like, could you have the sandwich, but then you, you, there's a cheese course. Yes, right? that's perfect. <laughs> following with the cheese, following with the apple, the, the celery, all this stuff really requires heavy biting and chewing, which naturally kind of cleans off stuff from your teeth. So okay. apples, carrots, we love it all. And then, and we're not gonna bring our toothbrush everywhere, but you kind of have told me that swishing. So post lunch or post, you know, late afternoon, whatever, a little swish? Yes, mm -hmm. it's it's wild how yeah. helpful, there you go. <laughs> and swishing can help so much. It's if you can't always, like you said, brush at work or at school if you don't have time after you eat. So really swish it around, it really removes any residual uh, debris on your teeth, as well as xylitol gum. I'm all about the, there's mints too. You can do the mints. Oh yeah, mints. so people with TMJ, is that bad for them? Is you, chewing bad or is that good for them? Because it's exercising that area. It's hard to say. There's different like types of TMJ. It depends what's going on with your actual joint. But most of the time, you'll know if it's good or bad because you'll feel it. You know I what I mean? See. If okay. it starts hurting you and you're like, should I keep doing it? Don't. Don't yes. power through. If it hurts, stop. You know, it's kind of okay. like that. But always ask your dental provider what they think if you have TMJ issues. But right. I usually say you're better off not over chewing gum. You should do the mints. Okay. And if you guys don't know, is it temporal mandible joint? Temporal mandibular. Oh, good. Lost that last bull part. Okay. Yeah. It's for people that so, kind of grind in the night, right? They're clenching too much. So TMJ mm. is the joint itself, the temp temporal mandibular joint. Thank you. The <laughs> um, but TMD is what we call it's the, dis the, the disorder. So when you have TMJ disorder, that's when it can be caused from clenching or grinding at night. Like you said, there's other reasons, you know, sometimes there's genetic. It's just the way you are. You're more prone to having those issues, but clenching and grinding is a big one. I see. And this has no nothing to do with, well, it kind of does, taking care of your teeth. Um, I recently had a guy tell me that when people have had, uh, let's say you've had a crown or a bunch of fillings that needed redoing, let's say you redid those um, ugly ones and whatever, um, ha having your head back with your mouth open for an inordinate amount of time is very stressful on your your jaw and also your neck. And you could have problem, not to scare any of you people, um, later. And I was realizing, not chronic, but I was having like, ooh, what's that? You know, why am I having that? And someone said, well, did you have any dental work? 
just heads up guys and there are there's workarounds there's some massagey things you can do but do you have you heard that one yeah definitely did you learn that in school Wait, you, know, <laughs> you know not really but i actually learned it from experience like okay. seeing that patients i've had so many patients who are really nervous to get a root canal or a crown or whatever yes. it is and they're so nervous and after they're like i didn't feel a thing with my teeth but gosh my neck hurts and i'm like yeah. oh so i learned it through experience that oh okay so yeah i definitely ask people if they have any back or neck problems yeah. before a long appointment so we have pillows there's things we can do to help make sure you're in a better alignment. Right. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you don't have to do that. Just take care of your teeth, right? Yeah. Yeah. Try to avoid it. <laughs> there you go. So speaking of that, let's get to brushing. Yeah. Okay. World-class toothbrush here. Um, do, are you a fan of electric? I am. Mm -hmm. However, if someone likes a manual toothbrush, as long as you use it correctly, mm -hmm. you're fine. But we have found that more people use manual, regular ones wrong, and it's easier to use an electric one right correctly because it does the work for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they... People like to tend to use the hard one and then scrub the heck out of them. And that's not good, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I've heard that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, <laughs> yes. And and here's the quiz. Okay. I bet if I did a poll before this, um, this segment, you know, should you brush your teeth right when you get up or should you brush your teeth right after breakfast? And Whitney's going to tell us. Well, It'll been, be surprising. I know. It's I was like surprised. 50 50. Yeah, yeah, you should brush your teeth right when you get up before breakfast, before your morning coffee. Okay. No matter how good of a brusher you are at night. When you wake up, there's always bacteria on your teeth and there's always going to be a biofilm layer of plaque and that loves to multiply in dark, wet places, which is your mouth. So <laughs> at night, you're going to wake up with stuff on your teeth and you don't want to mix that stuff with your coffee, which is acidic or, or your, your toast or whatever you're eating in the morning. You need to brush that stuff off Spit, rinse. I know everyone always says like, I don't want to drink my orange juice with the toothpaste. Like, the toothpaste oh, yeah, taste. Yeah, the taste. And I'm like, you get it out of your mouth, you can get it out, and then drink your orange juice. Yes, I I can only tell that because I wear a bottom retainer still. And when I wake up, I go, you know, who was in there last night? Because you know, you're right. You scrub your teeth, you put that on, you go to bed, and you wake up and there's this blah in yes. there. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. bizarre. Also, um, I should have brought this onto the counter. The tongue scraper. Yeah, you've got to be a cheerleader for that. <laughs> You've yeah. got to be, yes. I love a tongue scraper. I, a lot of people ask me, can I use my toothbrush? And I'm like, the toothbrush is fine, but it's still, it's better than nothing, but it doesn't really scrape off like yeah. that. So if you don't have a tongue scraper, something I have some patients use is a spoon. Oh. You can use a metal spoon from your kitchen. There you go. You can put it in the dishwasher, clean it really good, right? Yeah. But yeah, anything to really scrape, you don't want to press too hard. I'm doing like, I'm looking like I'm pressing too hard. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're gentle, but you'll be surprised what comes off your tongue. Oh, it's disgusting. Yeah, I do that in the morning after I scrub and I'm like, this is on my tongue. Yeah. Like, who are you? Yeah, who are you people, right? Yeah. Didn't do that in the middle of the night. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, and also, we, I, again, I, I, I'm going to get a tight shot of this. I have one of those uh, prong things, little rubber tippy that goes in. Yes. And you have, this is sort of a different version. Okay, that's similar. Is this a similar? Yes, and that other one's pretty similar, oh, wait. too. Oh, yep. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, gosh. Oh, these are cool, guys. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, have you ever been driving and see people at a light? Ah, uh, that's me. That you would, that would be me. Yeah. Yes. And so this, yeah. Oh, these are so neat. See, I thought this was for people with braces, <laughs> you know. In, but um, yes, obviously. Well, what's going on in here when right. I use this? What's go, what's happening? So it's not only for braces. It does help with braces, but mm -hmm. you can actually put those through your teeth. I got to show you with this. Okay. You can put them through your teeth. That's how you use these. That's They're a great. beautiful mouth, by the way. Um, it's a beautiful <laughs> Whose mouth. is that? <laughs> that is so good. Yeah. They're that, really great. They are very pretty. That's yeah, very pretty. That would kind of lead into talking about gums, because mm -hmm. guys, without the gums, right? That's that's what you're really getting at, right? To keep those teeth right where they are. Mm -hmm and not let your gums recede, you have to kind of, it's like gym workout, right? Mm -hmm. So okay. I always say that, of course you're preventing cavities because mm -hmm. you're removing anything that might cause tooth decay, but what you're really doing with flossing or using these proxy brushes or using any kind of manual removal of plaque, you're stimulating the gums. And that's what I always say is to my patients is, it's just like working out. You wanna, you're working out your muscles. Oh, it's not too fun when you're doing it. Maybe it is for some people, but, and then, but when you're done, you're like, oh, it might be little I feel something I did something because you did something good same thing with your teeth if you're not flossing every day it's gonna take time before it feels comfortable but once you do it every day you'll get used to it and it makes your gums nice and healthy this is so earth mother charcoal I use a charcoal floss okay, so that's okay. supposed to take everything away because you know charcoal you know get rid of everything the yes. only thing is it's really hard to find the this is black you guys yeah it doesn't leave black on my teeth but what, is it weird? So I'm okay with the black floss. However, I, I have to look into it. Each <laughs> one's different. However, I don't love black. I don't love the charcoal toothpaste. Charcoal oh, toothpaste is a little too abrasive for okay. your enamel, right? Okay. Um, it 
can actually brush your teeth yellow over time. Whoa. So the thing is, it's, it's some of these. Some of them are marketed as charcoal toothpaste or advertised as charcoal. And if you look in the ingredients, they're not, there's not even charcoal. <laughs> It'll just be colored black. So okay. those are fine. But that's why I'd be interested to look. But I think floss is fine because I like the black floss because you could see the plaque. On your, oh, you, you can. You can see it. You're there's like, that's snacks. fulfilling. Yeah. But yeah. when you're using the toothpaste, it actually removes layers of your enamel because it's so abrasive. And once you remove all the layers of your enamel, the thing underneath it is called dentin, and dentin is actually yellow. So oh. once you brush all your white enamel away, it'll look bright. You'll be like, oh, I got another layer of bright, another layer oh. of bright. But then once you get to the dentin, it's like, why are they yellow now? So we've seen that a few times. So don't do the charcoal toothpaste, but I think the black floss is fine. And I'm guessing it doesn't come back once you've taken it down to the dentin. The enamel does not grow back. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's not good. And then I know if we picked, if you said in a perfect world you'd like regular floss, not the glidey, waxy kind. I personally do. I think I always tell patients to use whatever you like. Like if you like that floss, you're using it. Mm -hmm. I love that because that means you're going to use it. Yeah. If you like the wax, go for it. But I feel personally for myself when it's non-wax, it really, I could really remove the stuff. It's not sliding all over the place, right. you know? So, but whatever works for you, everyone's mouth is different. Uh, let's get step away from food guys for just a second and talk about, um, well, braces, they're costly, they're expensive, right? So Whitney, got we got into a conversation about um, something that has occurred in our environment, and this is over hundreds of years, so it's not like I'm blaming you guys or blaming me, but things that we've done in our life to create a smaller mouth, which isn't a good thing, right? And also that means a smaller jaw, and that also means why we snore, have bad breath, and might need braces, all these bad things, right? So let's talk about kids and how we could help prevent maybe. Yeah. It, I don't know. Some things you can do, I mean, of course, wean them off the pacifier as soon as you can, right? That's interrupting with the natural jaw formation. However, having said that, something kind of like parents always may yell at their kids because they're slouching like this, like sit up straight, like sit up straight. Same thing, if you could notice if your kid keeps their tongue to the roof of their mouth, their palate, that's a good thing. Always be like, if they are like sitting there with their mouth open, be like, hey, close your mouth, put your tongue up. <laughs> so that can help a lot. Yeah. Tongue positioning is huge with that. Right. And and guys, with the tongue in your mouth, and you could Google this too, but or you could go to her YouTube channel, <laughs> Teeth Talk Girl, by the way. Um, when your tongue is pressed up, it's not a matter of just sitting there with your mouth closed, but you can start to feel your jaw. I kind of did it one day because some guy was talking about snoring. And I thought, I want to try these things that he was doing. And they were weird. But I thought, OK, I'm going to put my tongue up there. So all day long, when I was thinking about it, I I would put my tongue up there and man, my mouth was like, that was a workout, it really was. Mm -hmm. And that was the whole idea. So if you keep your tongue up, when you're thinking about it, um, your jaw gets stronger, right? And also if your mouth is closed, you breathe through your nose hopefully, because if you don't, you're in real trouble, right? So what happens when we breathe through the nose in this way? Mm -hmm. Breathing through your nose is considered healthier, right? When you're breathing through your nose, it's getting filtered and all, all the good things are happening. That's what we're supposed to be doing. But when you breathe through your mouth, you have a higher chance of getting dry mouth. And like we said, dry mouth leads to cavities. It can lead to gum issues. It can lead to a lot of of course, I was going to say with the braces and everything too, developmentally, but then even just functionally, right? So I think if you can just think about it and really try to breathe through your nose, that's what I tell every patient to do. Yeah. But always check, if you can't breathe through your nose, like you were saying, <laughs> right. if you're trying, you're like, why can't I? Like, maybe you have a deviated septum, see an ENT, be like, why can't you ask them, right? Why can't I breathe through my nose? Right, and that's true. People do have sinus issues, guys. But if your kids are little, and this is something you're going, wow, I have young kids, I'd love for them, hello, not to get braces. And hey, it might be an inherent thing, and it might be again too late, because they they got your jaw, your husband's jaw, or your dad's jaw, whatever. Um, but mouth closed, breathe through the nose. Um, it increases nitric oxide. It's a lung purifier. We were actually designed to breathe through our nose. So, um, but again, design flaw. I had a design flaw. I do remember. Same. Yeah, I was <laughs> like my my doctor when I was little. Lori needs to breathe through her nose. And my mom tells me that, okay, you're, you're five or six going, yeah, whatever. And you know, I'd be watching TV with my mouth open, just like everybody. Mm -hmm. So um, I do think it's, it's cool if you do not have to have braces. And yes, I did. Um, but, um, but also just from moving forward, all of us, if we could practice it, we have, if we can breathe through our nose, we have much better uh, oxygen to our bodies, much more, better lung health. So that can't hurt us. So again, remember in the beginning of this segment, we were talking about how what happens here can happen 
through all of our systems. So um, right along those lines, just to finish this particular topic, this, I was talking to Wendy, um, I bought this on Amazon. This is, you guys, it's mouth, mouth tape. Okay, so what if you fall asleep? Okay, what someone, uh, orthodontist explained this to me just recently. If you're not built with a nice big square jaw, I'm not, I've got the longer face, then once you relax, your mouth will pop open and you'll start breathing. So I'm gonna do this for you guys, because this is so fun. X marks the spot. So in other words, I might still get air through, so it's not means I'm gonna die. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, here we go, take it away. It. Mm -hmm. Good. That's what you do, I love it. I use like 3M tape. Like I don't, this is nice, this is like real tape it's for your skin. It's fancy, yeah. It's and probably better right. for your skin yeah, than what I'm right, using. Right. But, but it just helps you get out of the habit, right? right. We, we all have habits. I always compare it to the slouching. Like you don't realize you're doing it. So the mouth tape, I always say start it during the day if, you're, if you think this is you, if you're working on the computer, whatever you're doing. Because then you'll be like, oh, I noticed it. You don't have to do it when you sleep right away if you're nervous. Just do it during the day. Yeah. And that could be fun for kids. It could be a contest. You yeah. Know? There you go. Hey, I know. You're on the big long drive, you know, yeah. and they're tired of the kids talking. Let's do the mouth tape game. Uh oh, yeah. That's a good game. <laughs> okay. But do know that's such a neat thing, to your point, preventing, mm -hmm. you know, bad breath, preventing, uh, and you said the cavity thing. Yeah, cavities. Yeah, yeah dry mouth. That, mm -hmm. Cavities love a dry mouth, so we don't want them to love anything like and that. And you talked to me about cavities. Apparently an adult cavity, guys, is way different than kid cavity. Mm -hmm. yeah, explain so, that. Yeah, yeah, kid cavities grow at an alarmingly fast rate. So if a kid has a cavity, any kind of tooth decay, it can be a bombed out tooth within weeks, a wow. month. Like, I mean, it can't, it's, it doesn't mean it will happen, but I've seen it happen very fast. We see kids every six-ish months, right? And perfect looking teeth, six months later, where did this come from? It's a huge cavity. So kids always look in their mouth. If you see anything dark going on, bring them to the dentist right away. There's no reason to wait six months if you're concerned about something because kids' cavities go really fast. But adults, that's the only good thing about us, apparently, Ours right? Ours go a little slower. So you do have more time <laughs> if you're an adult, but I still think, why chance it, right? It gets expensive if you wait too long. Right, right. And then you gotta do that whole open mouth thing, you know, mm -hmm. which again is painful. We wanna also want to talk about fluoride, something that we may not have control of. My town I lived in Phoenix. They had fluoride in the water when I was younger. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've heard some say no. What is the pro and the con about fluoride? I only see pros. I see that it. all the research shows is that it reduces your amount of cavities due to remineralizing your enamel. Remineralizing, strengthening your enamel to not let the acids ruin it, right? So if you're brushing with fluoride, if you're drinking fluoride, you're good. There is a you can overdo fluoride, and I think that why why I think that's why it has a bad rep because obviously if you eat the tube of toothpaste, that that would be bad. Like that's not good. And just like you're not supposed to eat your lip gloss either, right? Like it's just not a good thing. But I think people get a little nervous because it's in your mouth and they're nervous. But nothing bad's going to happen unless you're eating the tube. But that is something with kids. Don't leave a tube of toothpaste out because you don't know they might eat the whole thing. Just like they shouldn't eat a lot of things. So that would be the negative. Of course you can overdo it. But the positive is. If you're using it as directed, it's going to prevent cavities for Interesting. you. Interesting. Yeah, I think they used to have fluoride treatment, right? Did yes. they put it in a thing and make yes. your mouth sit we there? We do fluoride treatments, mm -hmm. and especially if you're cavity prone as an adult, I mm -hmm. think it's great to request. Ask your dentist, do you guys offer fluoride mm -hmm. treatments? But for kids, most insurances cover it up to like age 14. It depends because, again, kids' teeth, the cavities grow so quickly, we need everything we can do to prevent those cavities. So we, we do fluoride treatments. What's in our mouth, what doesn't go in our mouth may or may not hurt or help us, right? So when we talk about tartar, um, that's the buildup, right? And so of course I was laughing. We've, I think my husband and I have joked about that. You know, you get that little scrapey thing and you go inside those bottom uh, teeth and you got this kind of stuff that's harsh, right? Yeah. Um, that's not something to swallow, right? But that, what, what, is the, what is the deal between the tartar and the heart disease? How's that go? Sure, so mm -hmm. plaque is the stuff we can brush off. That's the like slimy stuff. When plaque mineralizes and hardens, that's the tartar. You can't get it off with your toothbrush and floss. You have to prefer professionally get it removed. The thing about this plaque and tartar, it's bacteria, right? And it's the tartar is, I always say the bad bacteria, right? <laughs> really bad. This bacteria has actually shown in other parts of our bodies, meaning that if you have gum disease, which gum disease is because of this tartar, or the pocketing, what you have, gum disease directly increases your risk of heart disease, diabetes, kidney disease, Alzheimer's, a bunch of other conditions. So the, having this bad bacteria in your mouth can also go to your brain, your heart. So you don't want, it's easy to prevent it from in your mouth. So 
Yeah. You got to remove it. That's fascinating, guys. I mean, think about that. Hopefully, if you guys are watching and you're, you know someone who doesn't floss, right? I mean, because again, you know, even, even if you're just, you're a good eater, but you're just going, yeah, a flossing's not my thing. Y'all floss every, uh, I let my husband used to floss like right before he went to get his teeth cleaned because he didn't want to get yelled at. <laughs> yep, we know those. We know Here those. you go. That's helpful. So, you know, really, I mean, it, this is such an easy, easy thing to do, especially if you do use the ones, as, as Whitney said, um, the glide. Okay. Some people say, well, it has wax. You shouldn't have that in between your teeth. And I, I get that as opposed to not having anything in between the teeth and not stimulating the gum mm -hmm. that just makes total sense a hundred percent a hundred percent and i always say too you know when you're brushing and flossing like you said it's so if you think about it, it takes like 30 seconds to floss it takes two minutes to brush whereas like that can prevent heart disease whereas other things to prevent heart disease is running and working out and <laughs> right. eating healthy that stuff's a lot harder right like you have to, it's so easy to just run the floss yeah right and kind of conversely because why we were talking about you know brands i think this is toothpaste this yeah. Is the sensitive one, but like you know, I'm one of those purists, so I go with the Toms, sure. you know, nothing. My husband's got the crest, make it really white, and then but his teeth look so good, so I'm like, I want that, and I, that wasn't getting that, so um, so now I, I go 50 50, I do the crest at night and my Toms in the morning, but you say whatever, just use some, right? I think as mm. long as it has fluoride in it, you're fine. Uh, my other thing is if you are someone who wants to do natural, that's fine. If you are all about not the most natural you can do, you can get natural toothpaste mm -hmm. with fluoride. There's really cool natural toothpaste out there that add the fluoride. But if you're doing no fluoride, make sure it at least has nano hydroxyapatate in it. That's a really good ingredient. It's a long word. Say again, that again real nano, slow. <laughs> <laughs> right? They, they do it like N hyphen like nano, so, okay. Yeah, Hydroxyapatate can really help reduce cavities as well, but fluoride is the only one that's proven right now to do it, but it's better than nothing. Try the hydroxyapatate. Good, okay. So are you guys not surprised about all the things that we didn't know about what we do to our mouth or not do to our mouth? Um, let's finish this show with, um, we were talking about, um, you know, when I go to the dentist, now you're not in my town, otherwise I'd ask for you, but like you're gonna go probably get your annual, right? Or even a biannual, I do mine twice a year. Um, what should someone expect when they go? If somebody's got, you know, it doesn't have to be the, you know, to the stars dentist, but what should we be getting when we go for a checkup and a teeth clean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's two main things I would say. It can't hurt to ask to make sure they're giving you an oral cancer screening, an oral cancer assessment. It's so easy for us dental professionals to look in your mouth, check the sides of the tongue, check your, it takes us not long. And I feel like just make sure they're doing it. Yeah. And so just ask if you're not sure, just be like, Hey, did you check my mouth for oral cancer? Just want to make sure you did. Mm. Can't hurt to ask. Um, and that's the one thing I would check. The other thing I would check is your gums. I have so many friends and family that I'm like, tell me, I don't think they look at my gums. I'm like, what do you mean you don't think they, oh, they're kidding. like, they just clean them. They tell me no cavities. I'm good. I'm like, oh. maybe they are checking your gums and they look good and they just didn't tell you, but ask, make sure they are. Yeah. Just say, Hey, how do my gums look? Did you take any number? Just ask. The did number game. Good? Yeah. yeah. Did you do the numbers? A lot of people, maybe they'll do, they're doing the numbers silently and you didn't know the numbers check the health of your gums. Right. But, um, I just think it can't hurt to ask. Yeah. And usually they're pulling your lip down, they're looking, they're touching, and somebody's recording, and somebody's saying, three, so one, know. yeah, because I, I have good gums. I was very proud of myself. I have good gums. So, yeah. But yeah, you don't want, I don't think you want a low number, right? No, you want low. You want yeah. low. One, two, okay. three is best. So if you have about a four, you're really in trouble. No, no, four is a great point. Yeah, it's just so funny. Four, everyone always gets so nervous with four. Yeah. I'm like, no, no, four means we're okay. We can still reverse it. We're just watching it. It's, it's, there's a little inflammation there. Inflammation, five and up is where we get oh, a little like, Oh, mm. boo, okay. Well, <laughs> Whitney, so good. This is fascinating. I hope you guys think this is good. I love this. We're going to wrap it up. Is there anything I didn't ask you that you want to tell everybody? You know, I think the biggest thing is just to remember your teeth are more than just a cosmetic, pretty white smile. They're actually part of your health and keeping them healthy is really important to keep your entire body healthy. So well said. So guys, find Whitney again on YouTube or on Instagram. It's teeth talk girl all one word, right? And um, you'll learn even more. Thank you for joining us. I hope you learned a lot. Please let me know what you'd like to see more of. You will find me at, at Lori Corbin TV, and we will see you on the Malibu studio again real soon. Thank you.